Welcome back to the Screened Film Club. In today's video, we will be revisiting one of our favorite themes, the haunting and uncanny allure of Japanese horror movies, modern and not-so-modern supernatural stories of curses, vengeful onryo, technophobia, and hard-to-accept realities. We will be recommending 10 great Japanese horror films, mixed in with some of your own selections. If you want to see our past video essay on the subject, you can check it out over here. Now without further ado and with no spoilers, here is our unranked list of movies you should definitely watch. But before we get into all that, let's take a moment for today's kind sponsor, Skillshare. If you didn't already know, Skillshare is a great online learning community where you can find classes on just about any topic, from becoming a better writer, editor, or even learning how to be more productive. There are thousands of classes that you can follow at your own pace, and if you have the Skillshare Premium Membership, you can have access to all of them so you can sharpen the skill you already have, or indulge in new ones. One of my pandemic phases was getting into gardening, so Ikta Chaudhry's class on indoor gardening, grow houseplants, veggies, and herbs has been very useful. She teaches you some valuable skills on how to take care of your plants, growing your own food, but also choosing the right plant for the space and light you have. If Skillshare sounds like it could be of interest to you, then check out the link below. The first 1,000 of our subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare, so you can start exploring your creativity today. Try it out and learn something new. Now back to the list. Our first two selections are pretty much necessary choices. There's no way we could make a list of Japanese horror films without them. First off, we have the one that started the J-horror boom, Ring. Some teenagers have been dying in a mysterious manner, eyes wide and mouth agape, as if horrified to death. What they all have in common is their viewing of an eerie VHS tape with disquieting imagery. A reporter follows up on the deaths and puts her life on the line as she is left with only 7 days to uncover the tape's origins. When I first watched this movie, I was surprised by its slow pace, the unassuming color grading, and the lack of stylized action that I was used to when watching American horror movies back in the day. The slow build, the performances, and the iconic scares give us a classic 90s J-horror whose formula is still continuously attempted at being reproduced. As with our first pick, our second was also very instrumental in the J-horror boom, serving as Ring's rival franchise in the 2000s, sparking many sequels and remakes, some of which feature their respective supernatural big bads facing off against each other. Juon. The cruelty of the violent murder of a wife and child at the hands of the husband has imprinted itself onto the house where the act occurred. The film is divided into different vignettes, where we follow the people that have come into contact with the cursed house, as well as those who've succumbed to its persuasion. We never get a full explanation or exposition dump, other than the details that bring the vignettes together. Some of the scares might seem a bit dated by now, but most are still effective. Regardless of the film's TV quality composition, it's a great example of the indiscriminate and gratuitousness of the Japanese viral curse. For the following film in our list, we'll be going further into the past. Masaki Kobayashi's Kwaidan. This three-hour movie from the mid-1960s is an anthology of four separate ghost stories, mostly set in feudal Japan. The first is about a samurai that divorces his wife in order to marry into a richer family. The second is about a man whose life is spared by an ice spirit that takes the shape of a woman. The third is about a talented blind biwa musician that is visited by ghosts that want him to perform for them. The final story is about a samurai that drinks from a cup that contains another man's soul. Each folktale's slow pace is livened by the performances, the art direction, and the surreal atmosphere. <laughs> Whether split up in parts or all in one shot, this is a must-watch for Japanese cinema enthusiasts. If Kwaidan is the type of movie you like, I suggest watching the supernatural folktale Kuroneko as well. It's featured in our Samurai Film Recommendations list. Staying within the realm of ghost stories, our following pick is very much a straightforward one, but is told in an over-the-top, frenetic, and sometimes comedic manner, House. 
Gorgeous was supposed to go on vacation with her father, but decides not to when she realizes that her father's new girlfriend would be there as well. Instead, she and her friends decide to go visit her aunt that lives in a remote house along with a suspicious cat. Once there, bizarre events start happening and some of the girls disappear and it becomes obvious that the house seems to have a life of its own. As viewers, we also take part in the strangeness of the situation as we observe the absurdist visuals, odd cuts, eclectic editing, and take in the outlandish moments of violence. This film is a distinct brand of supernatural insanity. A real trip and a half. Up next is a film that starts off as a possible rom-com scenario and devolves into a hellish serving of the disturbing. Audition. Aoyama is a widower and his son keeps pestering him about remarrying. Since he's not too comfortable approaching women, Aoyama and a film producer friend hold auditions for a fake project. The whole process's purpose is to filter through women so that Aoyama might find the one. And he does, and he falls for her. But the ensuing relationship with Asami is far from perfect. Her mysterious past is both dark and dangerous. The way the movie is shot, the cuts and changes of perspective serve to place us on unstable footing, alternating between Aoyama and Asami's viewpoints, leading us to question what is real and what can be trusted. This film is not for the faint of heart. It's a grotesque love story. The following film on our list is Noroi. A filmmaker is investigating certain supernatural events. Little by little, we begin to notice a few recurring patterns and see how these weird occurrences are connected. As the filmmaker goes deeper, so does our understanding of the demonic entity that's been driving the story. Now I know that at the mere mention of found footage, some people immediately stop listening and disregard the movie, but hear me out. Noroi's usage of the doc format helps create a real and believable world. This lo-fi horror thrives because of its simplicity and rough around the edges aesthetic. It is because of the use of this medium that we get some pretty unique scares. <laughs> scares that we wouldn't be able to emulate in a nice, clean and flattering HD image. The performances and the set design all seem authentic and almost plausible. The underlying mythology doesn't overwhelm us with details, and it all leads to a worthwhile and chilling conclusion. The next movie is unfortunately hard to find online, but is worth the search. It also gives the Korean revenge film genre a run for its money. Confessions. A middle school teacher is quitting her job after having lived through a tragedy. As she does so, she attempts to get back at the students who are responsible. I'm not saying any more than that because one of the main strengths of the movie is how we are slowly revealed secrets and character motivations until we see the big picture at the end. The opening scene alone could make for a good short film. The subject matter is dark and disturbing, which is sometimes aided by the fact that the actors actually look like middle schoolers for the most part. The film's bleak color grading complements a stylized, heightened reality. It's both infuriating and satisfying. For our following film suggestion, we were debating which Kyoshi Kurosawa movie to choose. Pulse has that fear of technology element, as well as some uncanny creative scares. Creepy has an interesting concept, but rehashes some ideas that were better executed in his earlier movie, which is the one we're going with, Cure. A detective is investigating a string of murders. The only thing that ties them together is the fact that the victims have an X carved into their throats. The people responsible for the killings are all unrelated and have no real memory of what they've done, or why they did it. Cure gives us an interesting mystery with a complicated protagonist that is attempting to stop the frustrating amnesiac antagonist that can turn anyone into a murderer.
Our following pick is basically a family drama that happens to contain supernatural elements. Dark Water. A newly single mother is doing everything in her power to not lose custody of her daughter while trying to balance the different aspects of her life. At the same time, her new apartment keeps getting water damage and she keeps seeing an apparition. Which is starting to affect her chances at keeping her daughter. This film's strength lies in the coexistence of the supernatural with the mundane. The building tension comes from how one world can influence the other. Before we continue to our last selection on our list, here are a few recommendations from the film club. Cairo. It has this weird sense of dread throughout the movie. Infection. It's a clever J-horror take on the body horror genre. The Forest of Love. A movie expanded into a great series. The series, if you don't expect horror right away, gets insane later on. My favorite is Onibaba. It has such an eerie feeling. I liked Strange Circus. The intrigue was really nice, and there were plenty of horrifying elements in there too. Jigoku, Sinners of Hell, is super underrated. I've never seen a film show a detailed and chilling depiction of hell and what it means to be a sinner. Who really deserves to go to hell? Who is truly innocent? Is what the film asks, in my opinion. We will be ending today's list with Satoshi Kon's Perfect Blue. Mima is a pop singer that is transitioning to being an actress. Her old persona is abandoned, in favor of a more mature one that some people have a hard time accepting. On top of having a stalker, Mima is having a hard time telling the difference between what's real and what isn't. And if that's not enough, certain people with links to her are being murdered. If you ever thought anime is just for children or not to be taken seriously, this film will convince you otherwise. Satoshi Kon is adept at making us feel unsettled as the mystery of the story progresses. This is a movie that will stay with you. And we've reached the end of our Japanese horror movie list. Do you have any other selections? Then let us know down in the comments. Our next video will also be another recommendation list from a past video essay. This time, it will be 10 great Korean horror movies you should watch. So stay on the lookout for that. Make sure to stay notified for all of our future videos. Leave a like, share with a friend, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet. See you next time at the Screened Film Club.